Right now, the Idaho College murders. The criminology graduate student accused of stabbing four students to death is due in a Pennsylvania courtroom today for an extradition hearing. We're going to speak with the father of one of the victims after this report from Kena Whitworth in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Good morning, Kena. George, good morning. So within hours, Brian Koberger will be brought from that correctional facility here to the courthouse. His lawyer telling me that since he's been there, he's been in a suicide smock at all times, including rec time. He also says the facility has been very accommodating to Brian's vegan diet. As for today, he says his client isn't nervous and that his one request was that he get a chance to speak with his parents, something he said the court cannot accommodate. This morning, Idaho quadruple murder suspect Brian Koberger just hours from his extradition hearing. His lawyer, Jason Labar, telling ABC News he remains calm and polite despite knowing the death penalty is on the table. He says Koberger understands the seriousness of the charges and replied to him, quote, this will be a long process. Now new details emerging about how law enforcement tracked Koberger down. Sources telling ABC News they use public genealogy databases like those used to catch the Golden State Killer. You have DNA from a crime, uh, but you don't have a suspect. He's not in a database. So you use public databases of genealogy looking for relatives. Eventually, you get down to the point where you can match the DNA potentially to your suspect. Recent students of his at Washington State University speaking out. One saying his appearance changed around the time the murders took place. He looked a little bit more disheveled. He had like some stubble coming on and his hair was a little, you know, messed up or whatever. I remember seeing him and thinking like, oh man, you know, finals must be really getting there. 28 year old Koberger remained a teacher's assistant working towards his criminology PhD until the end of the semester before driving 2,500 miles to Pennsylvania with his father. His lawyer now telling ABC News that on that journey, he was pulled over twice for traffic violations in Indiana while driving that white Hyundai Elantra authorities have been looking for. Brian arrested in an early morning SWAT team raid at his parents' home in a gated community over two weeks later. Labar telling ABC News, Brian's father said they were told over a loudspeaker that the house was surrounded and their door was broken during the arrest. People in his hometown shocked. How do you remember him at those parties? Uh, withdrawn, um, kept to himself. Koberger's lawyer says his client maintains his innocence and is eager to be exonerated in Idaho. Now, Brian's parents and two sisters plan on attending today. I'm also told that authorities here have been asked to be prepared for Brian to go back to Idaho sometime tonight or tomorrow morning. Once he's there and appears in court, that official arrest affidavit will be unsealed and we will learn a lot more about the prosecution's case against him. George. Okay, Kana, thanks very much. Let's bring in Kaylee Gonsalves, his father, Steve, along with his attorney, Shannon Gray. And, and, and Mr. Gonsalves, thank you for joining us this morning. Our condolences to you and your entire family. Did learning of this arrest provide any relief? Yeah, it definitely provided relief for uh, our family. Um, we learned uh, later at night around 1030, and um, it felt like a cloud was lifted off of us. I mean, it's like seeing sunlight after You've been stuck in a house for a month. So it definitely provided relief and comfort to know that things were progressing and uh, all this torture of waiting was had a purpose and a meaning. And um, it, it, it was very, you know, it was right before her celebration of life. So that also added to, you know, knowing that millions of people have had prayers for us. And in a bad case, a bad situation, this is one of the best ways that we could have learned in the moments of learning it. Have you learned anything about how the police linked this suspect to the crime? Um, I think they've given our, our lawyer a little bit of background on how they put things together. I don't know about all the details, but um, we're still waiting and learning and, and there is those lines of communications ongoing. Is there any indication at all that your daughter may have known this suspect? Um, I think there. I think those things will come out. Um, I don't know if there's a direct connection, but um, we're waiting to see, and we're learning as every day. We're learning something new. Let me bring in your lawyer, Mr. Gray. What, we are going to see this probable cause affidavit uh, after he sent back to Idaho. Kohlberger sent back. What are you hoping to learn from it? 
Well, I hope we get some good evidence um, and some good information from the probable cause affidavit. You know, it's uh, the arrest. Um, you have to have probable cause for the arrest and having that information in that affidavit. It won't give us a full um, view of the case, but it'll give us some really uh, good information about what hard evidence they have against uh, the defendant in this case. What so. can you tell us about the, what the police have learned so far? Have they given you any more information as an attorney? Well, really right now what we're looking at is, you know, now that we have a name and a face um, uh, to this uh, horrible crime, I think all of the families, including the Gonzalez family and all the other families are looking for any connections there might be with any of the victims in the case. Uh, the Gonzalez family is looking hard at, at that, and we're going to be providing any information we have from the Moscow Police Department. Then they'll obviously make a decision on whether or not they want to release any of that information to the public based on the investigation. And Mr. Gonzalez, you'll be in court when the suspect arrives in Idaho? Yeah, we expect to be in court, and we'll probably take uh, different schedules depending on who's available. But yes, so uh, there will be a Gonzalez representation in that courtroom. Um, almost every single day. What do you want everybody watching now to know about Kaylee? Kaylee was a hard driven worker. Uh, she was the one who started your day off if you were getting coffee. She would, you know, get to that coffee for you, smile, and hopefully send you on a great day. Um, she did everything right. She followed the rules. She went out with a friend. She didn't do it alone. She uh, had a professional driver take her back. She did everything right. She didn't deserve this. And it's up to us as American citizens to make sure that we follow this case all the way through and we see some justice and we, we, we identify these people and we put uh, checks and bounces in there so we can get these people off the streets and uh, just live great lives and not have these small few people, you know, taking advantage of all of our trust. We are all sorry for your loss. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.